Welcome to Gut of Run. This is Will Sanchez. My special guest today is Annika Lynn. I've met Annika when we were both honoring the Ted Corbett at the inauguration of the Ted Corbett sign at 228th Street and Broadway this past August. Annika and her teammates from Nike actually ran the 18 miles to come and see the dedication. I was so smitten by her smile and fresh looks that I knew I had to have on the show. Hi, how are you? Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Let's start by introducing yourself to our audience. Okay. For example, where were you born? And tell us a little bit about your childhood. Um, I was born in Taiwan. Um, I, when I was three months young, um, old, uh, my, uh, my father was missing. So I never have a chance to see my father, and my mother has to work. And, you know, I also live with my grandma, and, you know, they were all both busy. So I kind of um, very independent since I was little kids. Yes. Okay. And your father, you said he went missing. I think he said he was on a boating mission. Oh, yeah. He, uh, I think he owned a boat, and then he was um, out for a job. And then my mother told me the whole boat sunk. Oh, my And he goodness. just never, yeah. Oh, it's so sad. In a way, I see it helps me to be more independent, um, to be more mature than the peers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I don't feel it's sad okay. at all. Okay. Well, you were so young. Yeah. Now, Taiwan, that's an interesting country. I, I'm sure most it Americans <laughs> don't even know exactly where it is. Where is it? It's actually um, a small island next to China. And the capital of Taiwan is Taipei. And we have the second tallest building in the world called Taipei 101. Oh, excellent. Yeah. As a child, were you very much active? Oh, yes. Um, you know, I was never want to be home. I always uh, hang out with the neighbors, you know, going fishing, playing, you know. I just don't like to, st I didn't like to stay home. And I didn't like school. I didn't like to do my homework. <laughs> I had to wait until my mom came back from work uh -huh. and pushing me to do homework. Okay. Yeah. Well, what kind of sports activities is Taiwan? No, is it soccer there big or something else? <clears throat> We don't have like um, a famous soccer team, but I know like um, the past, uh, like the World Cup, uh, we kind of very enthusiastic about the soccer. And I think it's, we don't have a lot of famous player, but I know we definitely love soccer. Mm -hmm. And uh, famous sports, I would say it's more like table tennis uh -huh. and um, badminton. Badminton, yeah. Uh, yeah, badminton and judo. Judo, oh, right. really? Okay. Yeah. Well, you guys sent uh, an Olympic team, right? Don't you? Yeah. We and which do. sports? And, and table tennis and, and that, that kind of stuff? I think, yeah, judo is one of the categories. Uh -huh. Yeah. Now, as a kid, were you into those table tennis <laughs> and judo as well? No, uh, no. I would just hang around in the neighborhood, like uh, this. Okay. Kids grow up in the street. Oh, okay, so you're just a street kid. Yes. Okay. Um, but when I was in college, I was very into um, roller braiding. I had a sort of team, you know, play roller braiding every day uh -huh. after, after class. Um, and until I had really serious accident. You, you did? I did. Now, where did you go to college? I went to uh, National Taiwan University in Taipei. Uh -huh. That's a pretty good college. Is it tough to get into? Oh yes, uh, you need to. We, um, you know, uh, we need to um, pass um, a certain grade to. We have an entrance exam, and you have to pass certain grade to be able to get accepted by the college. Okay. But, you know, I was lucky, you know, since I was high school, I was lucky enough to um, be able to go to a good high school. I don't know, luck, because you <laughs> said you were more interested in hanging out with kids, so something right. must have happened where you became more studious. Well, I think because my, you know, my mom, um, she's never 
uh, she never get like really good education. So she always has to do like really you know labor intensive work to support the family. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to be like that. Mm-hmm. And you know, uh, one day I don't know something just hit me like I can't hang on the street anymore. I need to do something. Okay. Like when I was age eleven or twelve, I okay. think. Okay. Yeah. Okay. At eleven or twelve, you wised up. Yes, and I was like, my mom say I totally changed, transformed to a different person. I just study, study, study nonstop. In high school, to get into a good college. Um, high school. Mm. <laughs> Not much. Well, good enough to get into a, a, this university. Well, yeah, I think high school was my best three years. You know, I was very outgoing and host events um, for school, participate a lot of activities. Um, it was pretty fun, and I was pretty well known um, at high school. What did you study in college, by the way? Uh, business administration. Cool. That, like marketing as well. Oh, cool. So after college, what kind of work did you find? Um, so I worked for a startup company in Taiwan, in Taipei. And um, so he hired me and, you know, I started my work. After, I, I didn't know that the company was about to go IPO public. Mm-hmm. So I worked for them for about a year. And then before the company went public, and my boss said, "Hey, you are good, you know, pretty good worker, and we want to give you a certain amount of stock options. Mm-hmm. Okay, do you want it?" I say, "What? It's no brainer, of course." <laughs> so when the um, stock went public, it's just like ten times up the price. Oh, yeah, yeah, excellent. I feel like I don't belong in Taiwan. <laughs> I need to see the world. Uh-huh. So I told my mom one day, I'm going to United States. And my mom said, you're crazy. Where is the money? I said, I don't know, but I'm going to get it. Oh, okay. <laughs> so by working for this company through you know, the IPO process, right, right. I got all my tuitions. Excellent. And I, so I emailed my boss. I say, I still, we are still in touch. And I say, I still... I'm very thankful that you hired me, gave me the opportunity. So I now can stay in New York. Taiwan is an interest. It is a sovereign country, I believe, mm. although the politics little, mm. sometimes gets murky. Yes. But, it, but, I, but I checked it up on Wikipedia, yeah. and you're the 19th largest economy in the world. Right. We do uh, produce, we do have um, a lot of great companies in Taiwan and we export a lot of like monitors, laptops, phone, HTC. Um, in the 70s, we used to export a lot of uh, bicycles. Cool. Yeah. And wow. then we become more um, technology island. Yeah, yeah. And then we start, you know, uh, build a lot of computer cell phone. Excellent, right. excellent. And, uh, and filmmakers are coming Ali. to notice your the country. I yeah. think you said the, uh, the Life of Pi? Life of Pi, Ang Lee, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he is from Taiwan as well. Okay. Oh, yeah. he's Taiwanese? I think he's Taiwanese. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. Oh, excellent, excellent. That's the reason I think he, um, he filmed um, most of the Life of Pi in Taiwan. Oh, okay, well, because I was reading Marcus Scorsese is going to do his next film there. Yeah. Or one of his next films there. He's a very busy man, so. He is, so yeah. Excellent. Okay, so, so now you had the money to come to anywhere in the world, and you lived your dream by coming to New York. Yeah. How long ago was that? Um, it was about almost 10 years ago. 10 years ago. Right. So what was the first thing you did when you hit New York? Um, the first thing I did, oh, I went to Fifth Avenue. <laughs> <laughs> well, not shopping, but because um, when I was in Taiwan, um, Sex in the City was pretty famous. So I had pretty much much um, every episode. Okay. And I remember all the lines, you know, subtitles. Uh-huh. So I just want to see the, the real New York. I was, dis- I was very disappointed when I landed in um, JFK yeah. in Queens. Yeah. It doesn't look like New York at all. Oh, okay. So, because, you know, my, the picture of New York is Manhattan. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So I was like, what? And then <laughs> the next day, I went to Fifth Avenue. 
boom. Oh, okay, that was the New York in your dreams. Right. Okay. Well, you, obviously you settled in. I settled in. Did you find a job, or what did you do? Well, I went to, I went to NYU. Luckily. For school. Yeah, for a master, for my um, yeah, master degree. All my life, until now, I have luck with the stock. Okay. Because <laughs> my money was coming from stock, and yeah. then also my first job in New York was for a stock broker. So. Um, I was doing marketing for the company and and um, for seven years. And later, I went to different um, job function, doing product manager and, and also marketing okay. for the company. Great. Yeah. Now, how did you discover running? Uh, in 2011, um, the day of New York City Marathon, my friend just drove me with him like, hey, let's go. I said, go where? Uh, let's go cheer for marathon. I said, oh my God, <laughs> why? Let's just go. So it was cold, of course, and I went, and I just feel like, oh my God, this is so cool. I need to do this at least once in my lifetime. Okay. I went back to the gym. I start 10 minutes. It was the worst 10 minutes, 10 minutes ever. And then add up to 20 minutes, 30 minutes, until 60 minutes. And one day, um, one of my friend at the gym told me like, hey, you should totally sign up for a race. And it was almost the end of um, December in 2011. Yeah. So um, that's the, there was one race called um, Voice Against Brain Cancer. I saw it was pretty meaningful, you know, and so I signed up, and I also participate the uh, um, the the donation get donation for the organization. Oh, I never heard of it. Voice against brain cancer. Brain cancer. Right. Very interesting. And uh, do, do they have a spokesperson or? A... Oh yeah, um, I think um, Tony Denza. Yeah. He is the spokesperson for the race. And uh, last year, I, I volunteered for um, this race, and I had a chance to take a picture with Tony Denza. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. Oh, now, I think you were telling me earlier that uh, you, a friend of yours was also running it because her father or something? Right. So she, we worked together, and then since you know, I, I want to do the fundraising for um, this event, and I went, I sent a message to the whole company and she came talk to me. She said, um, I think this is really meaningful because uh, my father uh, was died of brain cancer. Yeah. And then um, she also found out the race day was the same day when her father died, like 12 years ago. Oh. So she wanted to participate the walk because okay. she is not a runner. Okay. And she also want to participate the fundraising process. So uh, excellent. It was Ex pretty meaningful to oh, me I, and to her. My I, first race and, you know, yes. honor her father. Excellent. Well, very good for you. And uh, it sounds like that race continues on every year. Yes. Well, obviously, you wanted to do more because <clears throat> it's amazing. You didn't enjoy your first 10 minutes of running, but you kept at it. You kept at it because you had that dream to run the New York City Marathon. Right. I was lucky. Um, I I won the lottery for New York City half in 2012. So I I feel like I have another you know goal to hit. Okay. So I start run more and more and more to do the half. To do the half, and I also want to do the nine plus one because I need to run a, at least one once in my lifetime. The New York City Marathon. Yeah, I was lucky enough um, to know a friend that can send me an invitation for. The marathon race so I actually my first marathon was supposed to be in 2012 oh yeah but you say lucky you were actually volunteering somewhere right and you met somebody I met the person and he talked to me he felt like I'm so enthusiastic about running marathon and running so he thought I was very serious so he the end of the conversation he gave me a car he said contact me 
I can invite you to run a marathon. And then he sent me, yeah, the coat on, on my birthday. Oh. He didn't know that was my birthday. Yeah, yeah well. It was a coincidence. Yes, you have a lot of interesting uh, <laughs> karma in your life. Okay, but obviously 2012 was uh, canceled. Yeah, I was, so I was working from home because our office was um, in downtown and it was all flooded. So I had to work from home and coordinate with our headquarters. Um, and then, you know, at that time, that week, uh, the race was still going on, right, according to uh, mail. And yeah. then uh, on Friday, like 4 o'clock, my coworker from St. Louis told me the race was canceled. I say, no. And then he said, go check TV. When I knew the race was canceled, I just shut up my laptop and turned the lights off. Cause because I was training so hard, I want to wait for this day to shine my time, mm -hmm. you know. And then about an hour in the dark, I say, I'm so stupid. So I, um, I went back online and then I looked for um, if there was any group want to volunteer to stand an island or anything to help clean up. Yeah. And I, I, I think I encountered um, a group called um, I forgot. It's just uh, it's the, the group of runner, like over a thousand people, and they they um, went to Sydney Island, and then I participate with them for two times. Oh, excellent, excellent! Yeah, we did a number of groups. Right. That, 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 that I don't know. One was by Jordan Metzl. I don't know if that was the one. Oh yes, that was the one. And then Dr. So, Metzl, yeah. That, um, yes, yes, that was the one. His group was the largest group. So we had a team. After we finish, we feel like we can do more. So we had um, a team team member. He owns a wine bar. So he say, "How about that? We should do a fundraising." and for Staten Island victim. Yeah. So we actually went ahead and he, you know, he just um, paid for the wine and the food. We just need to invite people yes, and yes. we get money, uh, we get more money. And then we actually, we bought gift card, like Home Depot gift card, and we brought back to Staten Island. Oh, that's so cool. So Yes, yes, runners really stepped up to the plate in so many different areas and Dr. Jordan <coughs> Metzl in, yeah. in cooperation with Roadrunners right. did this event and I'm so glad that you were part of it. I was and um, yeah I was I was great I was glad and uh, I actually met a lot of great people through uh, this event. Excellent. Well now did you set your sights for 2013 then? I did run 2013 marathon but at that time um, I, I was thinking about you know um, change my career and then also you know just things happen in life I wasn't into running too much mm -hmm. I still I still ran but not you know as enthusiastic as when I was in 2012 and you know I just travel a lot you know I went to Europe uh -huh. <clears throat> I backpack to Europe uh -huh. I you know low budget backpacking, cooking everywhere I, I, I went, you know, uh, find the cheapest Airbnb. Oh. I even spent like seven nights in Barcelona for only a hundred dollars. For, for room and board or just for room? <laughs> for a room. Excellent. $100. And I cook, yeah. I cook, I meet friends, uh, I have dinner party every country, so. Oh, oh. nice to be single. <laughs> <laughs> I know, single and yeah, and have time, yeah. actually, yeah. Okay, but obviously you came back and because you wanted to do that marathon, that was I, in your dreams. Yeah, I came back the end of September and you know, I didn't train at all, so I just, I just ran. Oh. And you know, the result was terrible. Okay. It, it wasn't really bad, but you know, it was terrible. It wasn't what you wanted no. at the time. Yeah. But you didn't train for it either. <laughs> My, I, I, I know, it's fair. Life is fair. Okay. If you don't train for it, how can you get the result, okay. right? When I finished the marathon, I said, no, I have to do something. So I know I remembered that time, you know, my friend Kala, she told me about um, um, Nike running club. 
And I never like to run with a group. You know, it's pretty uh, stressful to run with a group because you want to catch up with a group and you may not be able to run as fast. So I never like to run with a group. So I say to myself, it's time for a change. You have to push yourself. Another lightning bolt, one out of 11. A year ago, you had another yeah. a time for change. Exactly. You have these moments at 11, now a little older. So what happened when you went to Nike? I was just totally, I, I love, you know, the people and the environment. Everyone was, it's very friendly. You also get to know people from different um, industries. They work in different fields. So, you know, it's interesting way to expand your network through running. Yeah. So you were part of the, what, we, what I call the legacy, Nike, Nike Town, oh, yeah. because it evolved with this new group. And when I saw you that day at the Ted Corbett <clears throat> event, yeah. you were so happy, you were so playful. I mean, you were, to me, the new face, the fresh face of the new evolved Nike. So tell us about that transition. How did it go for you? Well, in the beginning, I uh, was in denial to the new program. I didn't want to participate. and. Um, I was just like, okay, I, I'm not going. You know, like, you guys signed up. This is not the Nike program, blah, 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 blah. So well, one day I say, no, I still want to see how, you know, how is the new program. So I signed up. And um, it was, you know, it's just process for me to adopt a new program. You know, like, the, every Sunday afternoon we have to sign up. I understand why, and I accept it. And you know, that's the reason I'm. I keep doing it, and I see a lot of benefits. You know, they do put effort in this program. They have coaches. They have more um, pacers. They put a lot of resource during the long run. We have, uh, you know, like water, or we have Gatorade. We have, you know, rest up. We can get refreshments, mm -hmm. and we have awesome event like. Before marathon, you know, we have this racing mile race at the um, ICANN Stadium, and it's just so much fun, so eventful, and everyone, it's great, and I love every staff at Nike, and I, li I love every runners at Nike. I think joining Nike, I, I totally conclude um, running changed my life, but Nike makes my running life more spectacular. Wow, the great testimonial. Yes. Okay, well, almost out of time. I just want to cover a couple more things. Sure. What are some of your future plans in terms of racing? I want to, you know, qualify for Boston, like within a year or two. I hope, I hope, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> I hope keep uh -huh, on running uh -huh. and um, so that's my, my biggest dream and also I will do more ultra. So my, actually I forgot to mention, my first marathon was also in 2012, the 60K in the oh, park. Oh, oh, I see, so, so when they canceled. I the, just so you angry, went. yeah, I just wanna run, like let out. So the after anger. helping out in Staten Island, right, you I ran, ran the 60K. 60K. That, that was my first marathon. Okay. And then this past year I did uh, JFK 50. That's in Washington? In uh, Maryland. Maryland. Yeah, it was challenging. I mean, because I'm a city girl, I run on the pavement. So for me, running on the terrain and on the trail was uh, really different. Not fun. <laughs> After I finished uh, my race, my mom called and she said, maybe I should start running. I say, wow. Because she say, you know, I'm, me and my mother, we are different. I'm always the one, I'm the mentor of my mother. I inspire my mother doing things. I always took initiative. Okay, so I, um, you know, I, I, I decided to get my mother her first pair of running shoes. Nike, of course. And Nike, of course. It was difficult because uh, Nike.com in Taiwan doesn't have the um, e-commerce so I don't want to buy um, counterfeit Nike shoes because that was that's a big problem in Asia. Counterfeiting. Yeah. yeah. So I had I had to went to my friend recommend me a website, and when I about to pay, 
I don't accept foreign credit card. So I have to tell my cousin to pay for me and I wire her the money. Of course, my mom doesn't know anything about the process. And she got the shoes, she loved it. And she now runs, I think she told me like three times, at least three times a week. 30 minutes a day. Oh, that's very, very good. Yeah. So have you gone back yet to run with her? No. Um, maybe this year. I, I only, you know, get to see her every two, three years. Okay. And this, this might be the year? I hope so. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Now, I think you also mentioned that you're quite a cook. You invite a lot of your <laughs> Nike friends and to over dinner for, party. for dinner parties. <laughs> yes. Which is... Part of your experience, you said, when you went to Europe, you know, you did all those parties, and school too. Yeah. So, so it's interesting how you carry forward your skill sets. It just, um, so when I was kids, um, remember I told you I have to kind of take care of myself, cook for myself. Even like last week, my friend at the junior high posted a picture on my Facebook. She said, Annika, I still remember you cooked this for us when we were kids. And she never cooked. And that's the first dish she cooked. When her mother saw her cooking that dish, her mother cried, burst into tears. Wow. Because she never cooked. And she did one of your dishes. Yes. One of your signature dishes. I know. Oh, I was yeah. so happy. So I always, because food, running is individual thing, you know, but cooking is always bring people together. The smells bring the memories. Excellent. Do you have any dreams of opening up your own business? <laughs> yeah, um, it, you know, I, I still dream big. You know, I hope I can open a restaurant for athlete. The restaurant will be like a Nike town. You know, people can come anytime, and they just feel like that's the the kitchen of their house, oh. and they trust the food. They know, okay, I come here. I want to um, before race. I have my big dinner healthy dinner and then post race i have my recovery meal so and i want to meet be a like really fun environment cool music you know oh nice. I, just oh. my big dream well, i hope that comes true for you well listen thank you so much for coming in thank you for having me and sharing all these great stories i had so much great time okay, thank you for coming in. thank you it's a pleasure <laughs>